Okay, so here we have a problem of impact. So we have a bag, this bag is bag A, that theta is measured from here, and it's released when theta equals zero, the velocity is equal to zero, so the velocity of A is equal to zero. So it's released from rest, and it's dropped, and since it's attached to a cord, it will hit the this block, right? So, and they want us to find the velocity of that pack, which is A, and the block B after impact, and the energy lost during that impact. They give us the mass of the block, which is 18 pounds. Actually, that's not a mass, that's a weight. Remember that, and correct that, this is a weight. Some weight, and this is a weight. Remember that for U.S. customary units, the weight is a base unit and the mass is a derived unit. In the case of international units, that's the contrary. So we have the weight of the block, we have the weight of the, of the bag, and we have the coefficient of restitution. We describe the type of impact. First step, so we are given that this is released from rest, that we don't know anything about the velocity when it reaches the block. So the first thing that we have to do, let's name this position 0 and this position 1, which means that it goes from 0 to 1 and it hits the block. So we want to find the velocity at 1. That's my first step. And for that, I will use the principle of work and energy. And since we don't have any non-conservative forces because the tension does not do work and the weight is considered a conservative force that we can include in our potential energy, we have conservation of energy. And then we can write that T1 plus V1 will be equal to T0 plus V0. Since we we are at rest. We know that at zero, we have zero kinetic energy. We put our datum right here. So therefore, we have zero potential energy. And then we have only that one half my mass of the bag, velocity of the bag at position one, plus the potential energy. But as you see, I lost potential energy because I went down. So I have a negative sign right here minus mass A, gravity, the height, which is 3 feet. And the gravity, you remember, is 32.2. That is equal to zero, so I can make those two variables equal. This mass goes with this mass. So finally, the velocity of A is square root of 2G times 3, right? That will be equal to velocity of A is square root of 2 times 32.2 times 3 and my velocity of A is equals to 13.9 feet over second. So I have the velocity at point one, point one being right before the impact. So this is before impact. And it goes in this direction. So right now I have my bag over here and I have a velocity V1. Okay, so now we have to analyze the impact. So step two, analysis of impact. And for that, I use always the principle of impulse and momentum. So what I'm going to do is impact diagram or the two bodies together. So since I am doing the two bags together, the impulse that the bag produces to the box and the impact that the box produces to the bags are equals and the same magnitude and in opposite direction. So they cancel out and the, the impacts are internal. So using the principle of, of impulse and momentum, the addition of all the impulse will be equal to the addition of all the mass in position 2 minus the 
addition of all the mass in position one. Since this is equals to zero, because we don't have inputs, we have conservation of linear momentum during impact. But be very careful that this is only in this direction, right? This is what is called the line of impact. But in this case, everything happens in that direction. So that's what is called a linear impact or central impact. So we have here that the mass of the bag, velocity of the bag, plus the mass of the box, velocity of the box, will be equals, because this is equals to zero, to the mass of the bag, velocity of the bag in the first position, mass of the box, velocity of the box in the first position. However, we know that this was at rest, and this in the position one, and this arrived when velocity one. So this is equals to zero because it was at rest, and this velocity one is what we just calculated right here. So we, but we still have two unknowns, velocity of the bag after impact and the velocity of the box after impact. So we need a different equation. So right now, let me, let me write that equation with numbers. So right here we have six over 32.2 velocity of A2 plus 18 over 32.2. Remember that this is mass, velocity of B2 equals to the mass 632.2 times this velocity right here, 13.9. In this case, since all the equation is divided by 32, I could eliminate that. So this is my first equation, but I need a second equation. So my second equation is always using the type of impact that I have. The type of impact is given by the coefficient of restitution. So we can write here that the impact is inelastic, so we have 0 0.5. And then we have, if you remember, the velocity of separation over the velocity of approach. So we can say velocity of B2 minus velocity of A2 will be equal to velocity of A1 minus velocity of B1. And the velocity of B1, again, is equal to zero. And these two velocities are the same here that I'm looking for, so I can actually write this equation as 0 0.5, the velocity of one that I already have, is equal to velocity B2 minus velocity A2. I have a, a second equation, right? A second equation with the same unknowns, velocity of B and velocity of A. This system is very easy to solve. Just solve for one of the variables right here, plug it in here, and I will write the result. Solving system of equations, right? one and two, I get that the velocity of A after impact and the velocity of B after impact is, are the following. So I get a negative value for the velocity of A and I get a positive value for the velocity of B. What does that mean, those negative value and the positive value? So as you see, this velocity A is going that direction. So actually, we, since we don't have a negative number, we name that direction positive. So what is happening right here is that the box is pushed in the same direction as the back is hitting the box. So this is in this direction, and this is in this direction. So when the back hit the box, it return, so the velocity is negative. But the, ba the box is being pushed forward in the same direction as if it was hit. So we were able to find the velocity of the bag and the box after impact, which are these two 
So those are the velocities after impact. And then we are asked to find the energy lost during impact. Work is, relates to energy with the principle of work and energy. It's just the first way we wrote the principle of work and energy is T2 minus T1, right? So we can find the work which will be equals to how much energy was lost during that impact. Since we have the initial velocities right before impact and we have the final velocities right after impact, we can find how much work was done and in this case how much energy was lost. So we can say that they will be equals to. So the energy in the second position, we have to include the energy of the back and the box. So it will be one half the mass of the back, A2, square plus one half mass of the box, velocity the box two square. That will be my energy in position two, which is right after impact, minus the energy right before impact, and the box was at rest right before impact. So we have only the kinetic energy of the back, which will be A, velocity of A1. Okay, so if we substitute all these numbers, it will be one half. The mass A will be six divided by 32.2. The velocity of A2 is equals to 1.74. I don't even have to write the negative sign because it's square, plus one half. The mass of B, which is 18 divided by 32.2 times 5.21 square and this minus one half the mass of A for the velocity, initial velocity, which is 13.9 square. So if you calculate all these numbers, I did it over here, and I found that this will give you a negative value, which is expected, that the work is equals to negative 10 Point one feet pounds. And why is a negative value? Because it's an energy lost. So this is what we found. So we were able to find the energy loss during impact.